Chairman, thank you, Administrator, for being here. Um, Administrator, Re Administrator Regan, the National Ambient Air Quality Standard Rule sets a standard based on airborne particulate matter. What are some of the sources of particulate matter? Um, uh, many stationary sources as well as mobile sources. Right, and uh, the stationary sources include energy production, industrial processes, agriculture activities, et cetera, right, and mobile, diesel, gasoline-powered vehicles, but you just mentioned anthropogenic or man-made um, particulate production. But there's also natu natural sources as well, and does EPA have a breakdown of emissions generated by source sector between, I'm, I'm talking specifically between man-made versus naturally occurring? Yes. And um, let's, let's go over that. Uh, here's what they, they break it down to. Energy production, industrial processes, mobile sources account for only 21 percent of total PM emissions. Ag accounts for 14 percent, dust for 16 percent, and fires account for 43 percent. Does that sound right? That's, I'm reading from the National Emissions Inventory uh, of May 2022. Does that sound right to you? I, I don't have that document in front of me, but it, it sounds in the ballpark. Okay. So uh, the question is, um, as you're no doubt aware, I'm, I'm from Arizona, so, so many areas in Arizona, including those in my district, are in desert ecosystems featuring many natural sources of emissions. Uh, the May 2022 EPA policy assessment actually for Phoenix actually cites a 2011 dust storm as affecting uh, particulates in Phoenix. We also have a drought that's been going on for 26 years. That contributes to wildfire risk. We have wildfires out there. And uh, so my question for you ultimately becomes this. How do you propose that Arizona non-attainment areas, areas with significant naturally occurring background particulate matter, comply with the new standards that EPA has proposed? Well, I, I would, I, I'm proud to say that because of consultation with uh, members like you and others, um, when that, we look by, at By the way, just, just, just clarify, not to interrupt. I, I'm interrupting, but I don't mean to be rude yeah. about it. You and I didn't ever consult, but go ahead. Yeah, yes. Um, but we have consulted with members in Arizona and Nevada and places that you described. And this is why we have a very strong exceptional events policy. Um, you know, monitoring technology is advanced enough to determine where the pollution comes from. And so we don't want to penalize states where we see an exacerbation of PM 2.5 that comes from a wildfire or a dust storm or something that is not man-made. So we have procedures in place. 99% of counties in this country are projected to meet the standard by 2032. And the reason that is, is because we don't count some of the things that you just laid out. Well, I'll just tell you that uh, I invite you to come out and live in Arizona for about six months in the Phoenix metro area. And the number one particulate, it ain't pollution caused by man. It is caused by dust storms and dust coming out. And we've been counseled, go ahead and wet it down. Use that if you're, if you're going to stir up dust. Now, that's absurd. Uh, I want to get to another question, uh, another area real quick. Uh, and that is um, the, this, uh, on May 8, 2024, EPA formally awarded less than $2 billion of its $42 billion in IRA-related funding. Is that accurate? I mean, that's just, a, just a, about two months ago. Is that accurate that you've only awarded $2 billion of the 42 out of IRA? Um, I'd have to get back to you. I don't have that number in front of me. The reason I ask is because that's supposed to expire uh, on September 30th, um, and that's $27 billion in EPA funding uh, in, under the IRA, that which will not have been uh, disseminated. And the reason that that's important is because I want to know if you have any in the pipeline that you're, that you're going to grant before the, the end of September uh, 30th this fiscal year, or, does it, or, or is that $2 billion that in total? Is that going to be it? Can you find that out for me if you don't know that today? Yes, I mean, I, I, I'll, I'm, I'm making the assumption, which I believe is true, is that it's going to be in the pipeline and pushed out before. But let me, let me be specific and get back to my staff on that. I, I would like that. I appreciate that very much. Last question, last area is, is we've had three recent cases, uh, one a little older, and that's the West Virginia case. You've also had the Ohio v. EPI, EPA case, which is the EPA's Clean Air Act, FIP, was, uh, is, is being stayed into, to the duration of that litigation. You have Loper, which uh, set aside and overruled Chevron. I want to know what your agency is doing to um, respond to that 
uh, to those particular uh, cases, and because it looks like um, West Virginia was ignored by EPA, um, because you you were actually um, well, let's just I just because I'm out of time, I wanted you, I wanted you to answer that if you would please. Yeah, I can absolutely say that uh, EPA did not run afoul of the West Virginia Supreme Court um, issue, so we'd have to talk a little bit more about that. I'm not quite sure what you're referring to there. On the other court cases, a lot of these court cases are recent. Uh, for the good neighbor rule, yes, the Supreme Court stated, I feel pretty good about our case and, and how we're going to pursue that in the lower court. Um, in terms of Chevron, uh, listen, when I signed up for this job, I pledged to follow the law and follow the science, and the Supreme Court has spoken, and so we have to figure out how we get our work done under this new ruling.